Hey, we are in Second Chronicles chapter 16 and 17. Uh, what we find in the beginning of chapter 16 is King Basha of Israel is blocking a major uh, thoroughfare, a major trading route uh, into King Asa, and he does something about it, and it leads to all kinds of uh, issues, uh, if you want to say that. So here we go in chapter 16. Uh, New International Version. In the 30th, 36th year of Asa's reign, Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. Asa then took the silver and gold out of the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace and sent it to Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was between my father and your father. See, I am sending you silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. Ben Hadad agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. They conquered Ijon, Dan, Abelmaim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. When Basha heard this, he stopped building Ramah and banded his work. Then King Asa brought all the men of Judah, and they carried away from Ramah the stones and timber Basha had been using. With them he built up Geba and Mizpah. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you relied on the king of Aram and not on the Lord your God, the army of the king of Aram has escaped from your hand. Were not the Cushites and Libyans? A mighty army with great numbers of chariots and horsemen? Yet when you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. You have done a foolish thing, and from now on, you will be at war. Asa was angry with the seer because of this. He was so enraged that they put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally oppressed some of the people. The events of Asa's reign from beginning to end are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though his disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. Then in the 40th year, 41st year of his reign, Asa died and rested with his ancestors. They buried him in the tomb that he had cut out for himself for the, in the city of David. They laid him on a bier covered with spices and various blended perfumes, and they made a huge fire in his honor. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king and strengthened himself against Israel. He stationed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and put garrisons in Judah and in the towns of Ephraim and that his father Asa had captured. The Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the ways of his father David before him. He did not consult the Baals, but sought the God of his father and followed his commands rather than the practices of Israel. The Lord established the kingdom under his control and Judah brought gifts to Jehoshaphat so that he had great wealth and honor. His heart was devoted to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, he removed the high places and the Asherah poles from Judah. In the, 30, in the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, ben Hail, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathanael, and Micaiah to teach in the towns of Judah. With them were certain Levites, Shimei, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asahil, Shimeramoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, and Tobed Adonijah, and the priest Elishama and Jehoram. They taught throughout Judah, taking with them the book of the law of the Lord, and they went around to all the towns of Judah and taught the people. The fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands surrounding Judah so that they did not go to war against Jehoshaphat. Some Philistines brought Jehoshaphat gifts and silver as tribute, and the Arabs brought him flocks, 7,700 rams, 7,700 goats. Jehoshaphat became more and more powerful. He built forts and store cities in Judah and had large supplies in the towns of Judah. He also kept experienced fighting men in Judah and Jerusalem. Their enrollment by families was as follows. For Judah, commanders of units of 1,000, Adna, 
the commander, with 300,000 fighting men. Next, Jehanan, the commander, with 280,000. Next, Amasiah, son of Zikri, who volunteered himself for the service of the Lord, with 200,000. From Benjamin, Eliada, a valiant soldier, with 200,000 men armed with bows and shields. Next, Jehozabad, with 180,000 men armed for battle. These were the men who served the king, besides those he stationed in the fortified cities throughout Judah. So just a couple of points uh, to make uh, today. Asa, um, his goal was um, to protect themselves, uh, but he uh, did it without seeking God's advice in in any of it so just because um something works out in our life that doesn't mean that we did it the right way uh and there were repercussions because of it asa didn't finish well uh and then jehoshaphat one of the best things he did was to send levites out as teachers into the land so that they understood uh, what god would have them uh, have in store for them and so this, the, it's true of us. Um, we need to trust in God uh, to be in his word, uh, just like the Levites were, and to be willing to teach everywhere that we go. Have a great day.